Hello viewers, this is Wagda Runa taking you through today's tutorial on Integration 1 and its application. And today's tutorial we shall talk about Introduction to Integration 1. So integration is the reverse of differentiation. So suppose that dy dx is equal to 2x. To find y, we require a function that differentiates to give 2x. And clearly we see that y equal to x squared will, is that function. For example, if y is equal to x squared and differentiate, it means that the value will be bring down the power to give you 2, reduce the power by 1 to give you x power 1, which is 2x. So that is a function which can be differentiated to get 2x. But also there are other functions, as you know that when you differentiate a constant, you get 0. So if I have y equal to x squared plus any constant, for example, it can be x squared plus 1, x squared minus 1, x squared plus 2, x squared minus 1, etc. As long as this other part is a constant, it will still give the same result of 2x. What does that mean? It means that y equal to x squared plus c is the function which when differentiated can give 2x. Therefore, it implies that when it if you are to integrate 2x, you will obtain x squared plus c. So what rule is there behind integrating a function of x to power n? The rule is that if dy dx is equal to x power n, then y will be equal to x power n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus a constant c. So the power increases by 1, then you divide by the new power. The power initially was n, now it has increased by 1 to become n plus 1. Everything divided by the new power which is n plus 1. After that you have to remember to add a constant c. Provide, but this condition holds only if n is not equal to negative 1. Why does it hold when n is equal to negative 1? Because when you substitute n equal to negative 1 here, you get the denominator as 0. n number divided by 0 becomes meaningless. In other words, it becomes infinity. That is why we, this formula holds for all integrals provided n is not equal to 1. And we use the integral, so the integral sign used is this symbol. It is like a long s is the symbol used to mean integration. Therefore, if I were to use it, I will come and say integral of x power n dx is equal to x power n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus a constant for n equal, not equal to negative 1. So what does this symbol dx mean? The symbol dx signifies that the integration is carried out with respect to x. Remember, differentiation, also we are differentiating with respect to certain variable. Even integration, you have to integrate with respect to a certain variable. So there are some points we need to note. One is that the, since there is an arbitrary constant in the above solution, such an integral is called an indefinite integral. So we have two kinds of integrals. One is an indefinite integral. Another one is a definite integral as we shall see in lesson 2. The note 2 is that an integral such as y integral of y dx is not possible unless y is first expressed in terms of x. So you cannot differentiate y with respect to x unless y is expressed in terms of x. For example, y can be equal to x squared plus 1 so for you to integrate you have to first you have to first substitute for y so that y in, you will integrate x plus square plus one dx otherwise you can't integrate such then the third note is that the if the integrand is a polynomial it must be placed in brackets between the integral sign and the dx sign. For example, 
if the if this is the polynomial x squared minus one minus two x plus three and they want you to integrate it, you, it has to be in brackets. This is the correct expression. On the other hand, if you don't put it in brackets, it will be a wrong expression. So always remember to use brackets when dealing with integrations of polynomials. So we shall begin with problem one. Problem one, they wanted to, to find Roman one integral of x cubed with respect to x. Then Roman two, two x power five with respect to x. And Roman three, integral of dx. So we shall start with Roman one. We are given x cubed with respect to x. First of all, that means that n is three. Therefore, to integrate. You have to first increase the power by 1. The power was 3. Increase it by 1, you'll get x to the power 3 plus 1. Everything divided by the new power. The new power is 3 plus 1. So, divided by the new power, which is 3 plus 1. But you have to remember to add a constant of integration. So, when I simplify this, I'll come up with x to the power 4 divided by 4 plus c. And that will be my answer for this integration. Roman 2, they gave us the integral of 2 to power 2x power 5. In this case, the power is 5. So you have to first increase it by 1 to become 6. Then you divide by the new power, which is 5 plus 1. And remember to add the constant of integration. Now, when I simplify this, I'll come up with 2x power 6 over 6 plus c. And when I reduce this, I'll come up with x squared power 6 divided by 3 plus c. So that has been the solution for Roman 2. Now we shall go to Roman 3. Roman 3, we are given the integral of dx. Now, if there is nothing here, it implies that there is an imaginary 1. So you, when you don't see anything, just put 1. So they want you to integrate 1 with respect to x. But remember, 1, any number divided, any number raised to power 0 will, is, that same na, is equal to 1. So what we do, since we are integrating with respect to x, we shall come and say 1 times x to power 0 to give you this expression. Now that we have got a variable x, we can now go ahead to integrate. So our n is 0. Come and increase your n by 1. You will come up with 0 plus 1 divided by the new power, which is 0 plus 1. And remember to add the constant of integration. So in this case, we shall come up with x power 1 divided by 1. And this x power 1 can be written as x plus c. So that has been the integration for Roman 3. Now we shall go to problem 2. Problem 2, they want you to find Roman 1 integral of 5 minus 3x squared with respect to x. Then Roman 2, they want you to integrate x, 8x cubed minus 5x squared plus 2x minus 5 with respect to x. I think you are realizing that I'm not forgetting the brackets. Brackets should never be forgotten. So we shall start with Roman 1. Roman 1, they said integrate 5 minus 3x squared with respect to x. So the first thing to do, always when there is a constant, first add their x power 0 because you already know that x power 0 is equal to 1. Why do we add it there? For you to easily know or to easily see where, how you can integrate using the rule which was given. So now we have that we have put a variable on 5, we shall use the rule which says Increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. So for this, it will become this. And similar to that, minus is from here. Then for this one, do the same. Increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. The next will be simplifying. 0 plus 1 is 1. So 1 here, x, it will become 5x power 1 over 1. And for this one, to become 3x cubed over 3. And next will be simplifying. 5x power 1 over 1 becomes 5x and 3x cubed over 3 becomes 3 becomes x 
tubed, but you don't forget the constant of integration C. So now we shall go to Roman 2. Roman 2, we are given this integral. I think I that there is a constant here. So the first thing to do is add their x power 0. Then we shall use the rule for integration for this one. In increase the power by 1, divide by the new power for each term. For this one, it will be that, this one, it will be that, and this, it will be that. So all for all terms, we have increased the power by 1 and re divided by the new power. But you don't forget the constant of integration. So next will be simplifying. So this gives you this, this gives you that, this gives you this, and this gives you that. And we shall simplify further to get this. For example, 8 over 4 will give you 2, and this will remain 5, will remain the same. But for this 2 over 2 will give you 1, and this will give you 5x. We don't forget the constant of integration. So now we shall go to problem 3. Problem 3 says that find Roman 1 integral of x minus 1, x minus 2x with respect to x. Then Roman 2 integral of 4x plus 5 raised to the power 2. And Roman 3 integral of x plus 1 over 2 everything raised to the power 2. So we shall start with Roman 1 and the hint for such integrals is that you have to first expand and then integrate. You expand so that they are in the form of polynomials. Then you can integrate term by term. So Roman 1, we are given this. So the first thing to do is to expand this expression. So when I expand, I'll come up with this x multiplies through this to give you that and this one multiplies through this to give you this. So when I open brackets, I'll get that. And in the end, I'll come up with my expression as 5x minus 3x squared minus 3. Now, that means that the integral of this is the same as the integral of this, which is whereby this is the expansion of this. So, I think I said that now this one is a polynomial and can be integrated easily. So the first thing to do is to make this constant to add an, to add x power 0 on this constant to give you this. Then we can use the rule. Increase the power by 1, reduce the in, divide by the new power. Increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. Increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. Then don't forget the constant of integration. So next will be simplifying to give you that. And simplify further, 3 over 3 gives you 1, which is that, and 3 over 1 is the same as 3. Don't forget the constant of integration. Now, Roman 2, we are given this, so the first thing to do is to expand. You have to remember the rule in algebra for expanding such functions. So that means that this squared for example if it is a plus b squared it will be x a squared plus 2 times a times b plus b squared so in this case our a is the same as 4x and our b is like is the same as 5. so in this case force x squared will give you this times 2 times 4x times 5 plus 5 squared when you simplify we shall come up with 16x squared plus 40x plus 25. So that means that integral of this, the same as the integral of this. Therefore, these are two integrals are the same. I think I can see that now this is a polynomial and can be easily integrated. The first thing to do is add x power 0 on the constant, which is that. Then we apply the rule. Increase the power by 1 divide by the new power for all the terms but don't forget the constant of integration next is to simplify and then we simplify further for example 40 over 2 gives you 20 25 over 1 gives you 25 but don't forget the constant of integration Now, Roman 3, we are given that the first thing to do is to expand, but still recall this rule for expansion. Therefore, this is the same as that. Now, the one above is somewhat similar to this, so we shall use this rule for the one for the numerator. 
to give you that. So that means that integral of this is the same as the integral of that. So this integral is the same as this integral and from here we can put the this 4 is a constant so it can be pulled out to give you a quarter integral of x squared plus 2x power 1 plus x power 0. This x power 0 is from this. 1 times x power 0 gives you x power 0. So now that I've done that, I can use the rule for integration whereby I have to increase the power by 1 then divide by the new power. But remember, this 1 over 4 affects all these ones in brackets. That's why you pull it out and put the rest in brackets. Next to simpl is to simplify and then when you simplify further you will come up with the integral that is required. Don't forget the constant of integration. Then problem 4 we are given that integral I think I said that now this one comparing it with the previous question or previous problem the denominator was a value it was 4 but now here the denominator is a variable how do we do that the hint is to first split the numerator and then integrate so in this case we are going to split this numerator by saying this over this minus this term over this term plus this term over this term to give you this now after this we shall use the rules of indices of negative indices to come up with this for example this and this it is the same as same base same base subtract the powers you get 4 minus 3 to give you x power 1 which is that the the 3 remains down for this one when i bring this x power 3 up it will be same base subtract the powers to give you 1 minus 3 to give you negative 2 then this 3 and this 3 cancels to remain with only x power negative 2 and for this one, bring this one up, which will become 5x power negative 3, everything divided by 3. So now that you have got an expression in form of a polynomial, we can go ahead to use our rule for integration. And the rule still remains, increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. For each, this was negative 2, increase it by 1, divide by the new power increase it by 1 divide by the new power next is to simplify to come up with that simplify further you'll come up with that and that will be the required value for it for this integral problem 5 we are say say that find the equation of the curve passing through the point 3 4 and having the gradient function x squared minus 2x so in this case you have to remember that the gradient function is the same as dy dx i think you remember in that topic of differentiation one we define dy dx as gradient function but i want to get to y what do i do i have to integrate dy dx so to get to y i have to integrate dy dx my dy dx is x squared minus 2x so come and substitute x squared minus 2x so now th from there i have to integrate to come up with my y as that so x squared becomes x cubed over 3 which is that and 2x becomes 2x squared over 2 now the two cancels remain with just x squared but don't forget the constant of integration So at this point, it means that x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 4. Those values will help us to get this constant of integration. So when I substitute for x and for y, I'll be able to get this c, which is the constant of integration. So in the end, my c will be equal to 4. What does that mean? It means that now the required equation is a third x cubed minus x squared plus 4. So the previous one had a constant of integration, but the answer which is required you must substitute for the constant of integration so this will be the equation that was required it's now your turn to 
to try out the following problems and solve them. So that is problem one. Let's compare answer with that. That is problem two. Compare answer with this. That is problem three. Compare answer with that. So that is problem four. Compare answer with that. So that is problem five. Compare answer with that. So that has been our lesson for today. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel, Roa e-learning platform. Thank you.